Hi guys, it's Coach Lab from VS Tennis Academy. I'm a PTR certified tennis coach. I have over 5,000 hours of coaching experience and I'm a Florida high school state champion in doubles as well as a team. And today we're gonna go over what is the best forehand grip according to science. So this video will be broken up into segments and I'll mention studies to back my, uh, my claims. So segment one will be Eastern grip, which is the grip on ridge number three. So segment one is covering a study done in 2024 by Esser and colleagues which showed that the Eastern grip has the highest mean force output compared to all of the other tennis groups. This, in basic terms, means that the Eastern grip allows you to hit the ball harder and with more power than all the other grips. For an example, Western and semi-Western just don't allow you to hit the ball as hard. But the power on the Eastern grips comes at a cost and uh, this gets backed up by the study done by Dong in 2024 in Frontiers and Sport. So that study showed that the muscle that's called flexor carpi ulnaris, which is the stabilizing muscle in your wrist and in your elbow, gets strained way more during Eastern grips than in semi-Western and Western grips, which means that during Eastern grip forehands, you're just more prone to getting injured than in semi-Western and Western forehands. Um, so that's the ulnar side of your wrist. So it makes sense because look, whenever you're doing Eastern grips, your wrist has to be way more bent than when you're doing semi-Western and Western here. Um, maybe on semi-Western and Western, your elbow is more bent, but the wrist gets impacted way more here as your grip is right here when you're making the contact. And then you're using your wrist in this spot way more. So it goes here and this gets used way more. For an example, I'll go slow motion. This would be Eastern. So I'm hitting like this with my wrist. Then it will be semi-Western and Western, which I'm contacting the ball more smoothly here. It will be, my wrist is more straight. Um, yeah, and uh, if you wanna watch videos on bent arm or straight arm forehand, my last video is actually about that. And that also comes with the thing that if you're hitting with Eastern grip, you're more likely to hit with your arm straight, which also causes the ball to go with more power and um, then semi-western and western grip, which more often than not, you're hitting with your elbow bent. Segment two, which is the semi-western grip. So while the semi-western grip doesn't generate the raw power that the eastern grip produces, um, it can help you produce more topspin. And this is correlated with a study done by Kwan actually in 2017, which um, used topspin, uh, which looked at topspin forehand racket kinematics and um, came out with the realization that the highest produced topspin is when your racket is faced at a 7 degree angle and, the, and when it goes up fast. That was basically the findings. Um, the semi-western grip is the most used grip on the tour, both ATP and WTA and is in general the grip I recommend most people use. Just because uh, it's a mix basically between Eastern grip and Western grip. So you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the best spin, less injury risk, and um, still getting some force output, which uh, in Western grip is harder to realize. So segment three goes over a study done by Reed in 2013, which focused on the biomechanics of the Western grip. So what it came to conclude was that while Western grip helps you generate way more spin than the other grips, it also um, requires way more wrist flexion, which means your wrist is flexed this way and forearm pronation this way, which puts the load, as you can see, on your elbow and your shoulder. So biomechanically speaking, the Western grip can cause more injuries in your elbow and shoulder, but it can also produce more spin. So in general, it's like a spin monster of a grip, but comes with drawbacks. So the fourth segment will go over your grip tightness, which is also super important. It might be more important than your actual grip. So the general recommendation when it comes to science and coaching at a high level is that you hold your racket at about a 30 to 40% uh, percent of your wrist strength. Um, you don't want to be holding it too tight or you don't want to be holding it too loose because if you hold it too loose, 
um, there was a study done that if you hold it 15% you lose touch and power and same thing was done when you hold it inside you also lose touch and power um, the big thing is when you're volleying you're holding it a little bit tighter when you're doing ground strokes and when you're doing serves you're holding it a little less tight so 30 to 40 percent of most shots but volleys should work best for pretty much everybody okay so i'm making one more segment to just you know drill into you the fact that your grip matters yes but what matters more is probably how you use your posterior chain so how your shot comes from your legs goes into your knees hips and then trunk and then everything else follows that will generate more spin and more power than any grip you can use and if you use your legs and everything else with every shot and any grip any grip could work you can see professional players use every single grip on the tour for example Swiatek's forehand is western you know Federer had a more of an eastern grip even though it's western-ish and, and a lot of other players have semi-western so anything can work as long as you have the basics down which is your stance your grip and everything else okay so this is actually day number three of filming this video because I forgot to show you how to actually find the grips so um, the racket grip has eight sides on it so I like to go starting right here then it goes one two three four five six seven eight and then some people like to measure by the fold on their knuckle which I personally don't like I like to measure the first knuckle and where it goes so I'll show you and demonstrate all of the grips so if I come closer it'll be ridge number one ridge number two if my knuckle goes on ridge number two that's called continental grip if my knuckle goes on ridge number three which is right here is the eastern forehand grip and then if my knuckle goes on ridge number four which is right here that's semi western forehand grip if it goes on ridge number five that's western grip and then there's a thing that's actually called the hawaiian grip which is pretty much holding the continental grip and going here actually my doubles partner in high school who won states uh, with played with a hawaiian grip weirdest thing ever but hey it worked and he's a division one player now so just proves that any grip can work for anybody um, but yeah now you know all the grips and you know how to uh, hit it with any of the spots so, so yeah some of the video um, the eastern grip is the grip that produces the most power the semi western grip is the modern grip that most players use and you probably should be using too that's the most versatile and the least injury prone and then western grip is the spin monster grip that you want to use if you like those heavy topspin shots but it puts more strain on your elbow and your shoulder and yeah so the video is over thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please like comment subscribe hit the bell button that'd be great that helps out the channel a lot and um, I'll put up more videos like this based on science and uh, my coaching experience so thank you so much for watching and hopefully see you soon